Alright, today I want to walk you through if this is your first time doing a deck of mile or just a deck of fit in general, I want to give you some key beginner tips for your first deck of fit event. Specifically, today we're doing the deck of mile, but a lot of what I'm going to teach you today will apply to any deck of fit race, whether you're doing a deck of strong, a deck of fit, the whole thing, or a deck of mile like we're doing today. So we're going to jump into the race and I'm going to go through some key things that will help you. But before we do that, let me just give you some pre-race advice if this is your first time. First things first, don't come out of the gate hot. You want to go through a solid warm-up pre-race. So get into your headspace, get clear, but mentally do not think that the race starts when the race starts. The race is a progressive event, meaning throughout the entire event, you're gonna get a little bit deeper into what we call the pain cave. You don't wanna blow your race right out of the gate. Mentally, what I want you to do is start a little bit slower. It should feel a little bit easier than anticipated. Early on, you can always build as the race goes along. The second tip I'll give you is to actually have a plan for your race. So go through the stations, whether you're doing a deca fit or some other type of hybrid fitness race, go through station by station, run by run, and actually have pen to paper or type it up a strategy for each of the stations, which I'll help you with today, obviously, as we go through. But if you write it down ahead of time, it actually kind of relieves the anxiety that I know I get before a race of like, oh, what am I gonna do here? How am I gonna do this here? If you review it a few times leading into your race, you'll feel way more in control and way more at ease with the race itself. And I promise you, you'll have a much better race. Of course, last but not least, make sure you warm up. Give yourself about 30 minutes before your race time to come in, ease into the warm up, get your body going. For me, I'm racing in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So I'm gonna start my warm up now. And then uh, the second thing is make sure you're hydrated. Make sure you include some electrolytes, some sodium, potassium, magnesium. Personally, I, if it's a longer race, like a full deck of fit, I will eat before the race. If it's a short race, I go based off of feel. I'm really good at training fasted in my normal day-to-day -day routine. So it, at a bare minimum, I'll have water, lots of water, enough to where I need to use the restroom a couple times before the race, electrolytes, and probably a little bit of pre-workout that has some creatine, some ca caffeine, just for performance uh, and just overall endurance. But in terms of food, on a short race, I don't like to eat anything beforehand. If I do take in calories, it's usually liquid calories, but this will be different from person to person. What I can tell you for longer races, like anything over 30 minutes or around 30 minutes, a small meal about 90 minutes before your race of mostly carbohydrates, a tiny little bit of protein and a tiny little bit of fat will go a long way to ensuring you have an awesome race and have the fuel to finish strong. Without further ado, let's go jump into the race. I'll do a voiceover as we go through, giving you some tips station by station, so that way you're prepared for your first deck of mile, deck of fit, or deck of strong. Let's go have some fun. Okay, let's talk warm up. This is the warm up for the deck of mile. I start with some glute bridges here, one of a few movements that I do to get things really going and make sure my legs are ready to perform. Romanian deadlifts is another one. Uh, just body weight, not trying to you know hurt myself here or strain anything it's just getting everything ready to go the hamstrings the glutes make sure you give yourself i would say at least 20 minutes before your race to get warmed up i like to practice my reverse lunges it's the first movement that you're going to do besides running so it's i just like to mentally get in the zone um i do shoulder taps in a plank position my plank position here looks kind of kind of off i need to be a little lower um but then uh, I finished my warm up with a run and a little bit of rowing. That that gets me fully prepared. I just want to make sure I give myself about five minutes before the race starts to just get mentally focused, five, which I did here. Four, and then it's time to get into the three, race. We we'll count down. Two, I track it on my watch. And then, uh, we're off to the races. I started pretty hot here. I was running actually about a 525 per mile pace, which is really fast for me. The reverse lunges, not much to say here. Didn't get a lot of footage because honestly, it's pretty straightforward. Just don't blow your whole race. Take it nice and slow. Make sure you stand a little higher than I did. I would say just a slightly bit higher. Keep your chest up, breathe, and then get on your run and get back to the row. The row and the reverse lunges are where people come out a little too hot. You know, they start pretty strong. And I was, I was 
feeling good here. Like I didn't feel like I was exerting that much effort. When I look at the video, I don't even look like I'm trying. And I was right around a 146, 147 pace. I unstrap myself before I get to 500 meters because I just want to get out as quickly as I can. Hit zero on the meters and then I'm I'm gone. Um, that's just a little pro tip. You don't need to wait until you get done to unstrap. Do it before. Just give a couple pulls and then box step overs is the next one. I get right into it. You see, I came in on the run, just got right into it. I start with this like twisting form where I'm coming almost facing the box, stepping straight up. I don't love it. And you'll see here, I switched right here. I switched to doing the side, which I prefer. I prefer side to side. You got to practice this though. This isn't one that you'll be able to just do for the first time and go, oh yeah, I get it. Unless you just have, you know, just tremendous, in, you know, uh, natural instincts with the box. This will take some practice. I like the side to side. I came out of that feeling a little bad, I'll be honest. I could see I just I was a little labored coming into my run here. But then the next one is the sit-ups, 25 medicine ball sit-ups. Don't wear a hat, it will fall off. Anyway, um, I didn't feel my best at this station. And this is one that technically should be the easiest one of the day, where you kind of kind of get your breath back a little bit. Unfortunately, you're doing crunches, so you know, your, your breathing will still be a little compromised, but I, uh, I got through this one relatively slowly. I mean, I'm looking at my pace here. I don't love the speed that I'm doing this. I look like I'm, I'm laboring a little bit. So word to the wise, this, this one should be faster if you're really, you know, trying for a good time. But anyway, uh, you'll see here, I'm wrapping it up. My form looks, you know, whatever I could be better. Um, we'll continue to practice this almost slipped and ate it there on that on that paper on the ground. But anyway, we're back in the ski, okay? So the ski is where I really stuck to the plan. I came in feeling like, all right, not feeling my best right now. So I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm gonna stick to right around two minutes per 500, which is compared to the like elite level, it's not great. Um, but it's also not terrible. You know, you'll have some people here who are like 230, 240. I just like to be right around two minutes. now. I'm looking at my form and I really wish I would have used my legs a little more here. I'm guessing it's just I was feeling tired. Legs felt a little heavy. So I'm not coming up on my toes and really driving down with my glutes, hamstrings and quads. Um, I'm, I'm driving down a little bit like it's starting the movement and I'm finishing with my arms, which is what you want to do. But I could have definitely used more lower body here. So word to the wise, like, you know, don't make this an upper body movement. Um, don't gas yourself out trying to drag these handles down. Use your lower half. That's where the movement starts and really where the power comes from. Um, but the ski erg is one where people can get, you know, get pretty jacked up middle, close to the middle of the race here. I mean, this is, this is basically halfway through, right? So for me, it was just about keeping my breathing where I wanted to be. Um, my coach was awesome here. Uh, he was pushing me. I think his name was David. Shout out to you, dude. Um, you were, you were super great. And then I get into farmer's carry. So this is where I really excel in these events. Um, my grip is strong. I'm moving at a pretty good clip. You'll see I do this unbroken. You know, I don't take any breaks, um, but I'll just be very transparent. I came out of the farmer's carry feeling like, okay, I'm pretty, I'm pretty gassed. And I think the reason for that is my run before the farmer's carry was very fast. I think it was one of my faster runs of the day. It was like right around 520. I really pushed it unnecessarily. I, I honestly should have eased back a little bit prior to running here and then gotten into the farmers, knocked it out quick, and then you know use my use my strength, which you'll see here. I'm almost done. I think this is the last one. It's five up and down. Big thing here is keep your chest up, keep your breathing uh, airways open, which I did, boom, gone. So I came out of that and going, man, I'm not feeling, not feeling that fast today. Came into the bike. And this is where you will see I hit a wall, um, which is you know common on the bike, but one that I'm trying to work through. Now, I started on the bike at a pretty slow pace. And I think it was because I came off that run going, man, I am just, I can't get my breath back, right? I can't get my air back. My head is down here, which should have been up. There we go. Pick up the head. But still, I'm, I'm laboring, right? I'm, and you'll see when you get tired. So I, I think I did about eight calories and then I came, <laughs> took my hands off and I was like, all right. I got to get my wind back. And um, it took me a second. You'll see here, though, as I do start to pick up the pace, right? I, reality kind of hits me and I go, all right, well, I can't be on this bike for two minutes. That's going to completely ruin my race. Will I get a PR on the bike today? I don't think so. But 
My strategy coming in was to do 10 calories hard, five easy, 10 hard, and that did not go well. Should have probably eased back and done five hard, five easy, five hard, five easy, five hard. Um, which you'll see here, I kind of I kind of just grit my teeth and muscle my, my way through the rest, which definitely tax me quite a bit. Um, but like I said, oh, hands came off the bike again, which, yep, that's a, that's a sign that I'm not at my best because when the hands come off, that means I'm really struggling. So anyway, um, facial expressions tell the whole story here. This bike sucks. Uh, you got to practice this one. Um, I love the method of doing five hard, five easy, five hard. Ultimately, I would like to get to the point where I could do 10 really hard, do five relatively easy and then finish with 10 pretty hard and be off under a minute and 15 would be great so i'd have to go back and look at the time here but uh it wasn't my fastest anyway um, got back out and uh came back into the wall or the ball over the shoulder just feeling just toast um, i think i knock out which once again my, my rule is just get right into it i think i knock out three or five here gotta see before I just go, oh my gosh, I'm about to really hit it. I, I do hit the wall here, um, you'll see, and I, I just stop. <laughs> I just stop because I am just toast. W word to the wise, just don't stop if at all possible. Like here, I should have just picked the ball up slowly, just kept going. Because if you do the math, like I'm counting in my head, I probably could have knocked out five reps by now, five or six. Yes, it would have sucked. Yes, I may have puked, but it's okay because it's gonna suck either way, right? So I pick the ball back up and I, I do get moving here. Um, it's not, this isn't my best race and that's okay. I mean, sometimes, you know, I came off of doing back-to-back -back high rocks events. My legs just felt heavy and um, I was able to work my way through. I don't know if my camera, yeah, I think my camera guy skipped some of the other, other reps because I did um, pause again towards the uh, back half there. But anyway, I'm coming in uh we go into this sl the sled now the sled uh or whatever you want to call this darn machine uh is pretty pretty hard to move um you can muscle it but it's just it's it's not going to move as fast as you might think for me my big keys here is just keep it moving i don't stop right i'm not taking breaks i'm not resting you know i'm not trying to get my you know i'm not trying to pause and you know whatever i just i get my breath back as i go along because i know like Yes, I could probably move it slightly faster. Um, and here, you know, I thought about doing some muscle uh, pulls, like pulling the sled. Um, but man, I was just, I was taxed. Um, so I didn't row the sled like I do sometimes. I just arms straight, you know, quick feet there and back. Um, but uh, one thing I'll say here that I that I noticed that I'd like to have done better is got my head up a little bit more got my chest up a little bit more i may i may try arms bent closer to the the uh the sled like where my arms closer to my side instead of arms straight um on the push so that i can get my breath back a little easier because when you have your head down like that um you're just you're you're, you're restricting your airway quite a bit and it just makes it hard <laughs> more than anything to get your breath back um, so, you know, I'm, I'm driving here. I'm keeping my feet moving, which is good. Um, you know, race is just about over. I got one more run. I think this is my last pull. You know, just keep in mind, my photographer didn't, I don't think filmed every, every set of a little, every little rep of everything, but I did finish, uh, here. And I remember going on that run and checking my watch and going, dude, I'm gonna have to do these burpees unbroken if I want any chance um, of being close to my PR, which I did not hit a PR, but I did the burpees unbroken, which I was super pumped about afterwards because I'll tell you, I was hurting here. Um, you gotta get the ram above your head. So the angle here, yeah, I'm getting it above my head. Um, that's the key. I don't love the form. Oh, I checked my watch there. I don't know if you saw that, but I do check my watch. And at that point, I realized, okay, I'm not going to hit a PR, but I am going to finish this darn thing strong because I think, you know, I had like, whatever, 14 burpees left, 12 burpees left, whatever. Um, I wasn't going to stop. I said, you know, because if I stop, then my time is going to be god awful. But if I really push through, I may get close to where I wanted to be. Um, ended up, you know, not hitting a PR, which is all good. Um, not every race is going to be your personal best, but... This burpee time, honestly, I think crazily enough, I think this was my personal best in terms of burpee time. I need to go back and watch some old footage of some of my other races and time it, but I will time this one and see 
how it's stacked up compared to my other ones because I'm pretty sure this is the fastest I ever did burpees. Also, probably one of the worst I've ever felt. Uh, there we go. So that is the that is it, guys. Appreciate you watching. Hope these tips helped. And um, yeah, that one sucked, but hey, got through it. All Crushed right, team. It. That wraps up the deck a mile. Hopefully, the tips that I shared while you watch me race uh, help you. This is just the, me documenting my journey in hopes that it helps you on yours. Uh, transformation, permanent transformation, doesn't have to just be about weight loss. Obviously, that's what I do 99% of the time is I help you get in the best shape of your life. You can learn all about that in the description below. But what I wanna say is that, you know, even on my worst days, which today was one of those days, I didn't hit my targets. I wanted to finish the race in 19 minutes, 15 seconds or so. But I finished in 20 minutes and 50 some seconds. And it just uh, wasn't my day. Wasn't really recovered enough from my races last weekend. Probably just for whatever reason, mentally wasn't as strong, but it's okay. It's okay because I'm not competing against anybody else except myself. And I hope that you are the same exact way. Whether you're trying to lose fat, you're trying to do a race, you're trying to do your first deck of fit, do not compare yourself. It doesn't do anything positive. Compare you to you. Uh, most importantly, do what you said you were going to do. And what I said I was going to do is I was going to come here and I was going to finish. So we're back to pushing the, uh, the boundaries, getting out of our comfort zone. And uh, I'm going to go get some food. But let me know if this video helped in the comments. Let me know what your next race is and if you want more of these videos. If you do, I'll keep making them. Uh, obviously, sprinkling in a lot of the just general transformation stuff, how to lose fat, how to set up your diet, all that cool stuff. But hopefully these DecaFit and other hybrid races are getting on your calendar and you get out and you test yourself and you have some fun because that's what it's all about. So shout out to all my clients who came out today who participated or just cheer people on. Uh, and shout out to Exergio Fit, Emmy Cross, man. Uh, great people over there. Great gym in Ashburn, Virginia, where they hosted it. So appreciate you. And uh, look forward to the next one. Life moves fast. Make it count. See you soon.